Welcome into the Alabama Football Report. I am Tom Downey. It's an at-home style video because there is, of course, this massive ongoing head coaching search for the Crimson Tide that we needed to make sure we discussed. Uh, but I'm at home with the uh, two-year-old kid today, so wasn't really going to be able to come into the studio to film. So it's this or nothing. I know we don't have the fancy graphics. I, I apologize for that. But if you at least appreciate our updates, we would appreciate a like on today's video. Uh, helps keep the audience good since typically on these videos, it's shorter watch time because it's just my ugly face on screen. Uh, so we appreciate the likes here. Let's get into the latest then on the Alabama coaching search. We began this, this search and we've called it for the most part the consensus six, if you will. Uh, in no particular order, Steve Sarkeesian, Lane Kiffin, Dan Lanning, Kalen DeBoer, Mike Norvell, and Dabo Sweeney. And every single list you've seen, those were the six names that were always on it. Now, we know Dan Lanning is out. I think we can now include Steve Sarkeesian in the out category. Uh, he and Texas sending out tweets today uh, with the paraphrasing, I'm here to stay, you know, whatever, hype video for for next year. So I think we can take Sark out of the running there. Uh, not a lot going on buzz-wise around, you know, either Lane Kiffin or Dabo Sweeney. So we'll, we'll put those two to the side for the time being. Other names have come in this mix as of late that we'll get into, but the two big ones are Mike Norvell, the Florida State head coach, and Kalen DeBoer, the Washington head coach. Now, what is most noteworthy and we know how college football rumors work, and this is as juicy as it gets. Kalen DeBoer was supposed to have a radio spot this morning for one of the local radio stations out west. The radio station announces, hey, he's not going to come on there. Uh, Coach DeBoer and the uh, athletics are go or Western uh, Washington Athletics are going to work towards a future that they can be excited about. The station later said that. He was unavailable because he's meeting with the athletic director, etc. And uh, Bama Online, the on three side, is reporting that Kalen DeBoer uh, has met with uh, Alabama, or likely has met, I should say, with Alabama athletic director Greg Byrne. Mike Norvell is going to get a meeting in an interview as well. We'll come back to, to Tommy Reese there. But very clear to me that, that Kalen DeBoer is one of the top targets, as much as we can gather from this type of stuff, knowing that Bam is giving a fairly tight lid on it all, uh, is a top target for the Crimson Tide. Joe Klatt said he'd be surprised if it wasn't him. Colin Cowherd says he was a top target. It'd be an interesting hire. Uh, DeBoer's had success everywhere he has gone, from the NAIA level to OC jobs to jumping to Indiana uh, as the OC, to Fresno State head coach, Washington coach. Everywhere he's gone, he's won. But the furthest uh, south and east he's been is Indiana. So he doesn't have any real SEC experience. That's going to be very different for him if he ends up being the next head coach. More on this, Norvell, and other ca candidates being linked to this gig. But first, today's pin comment. Will Kalen DeBoer be Alabama's next head coach? Why for yes and for no? Sound off for me in the comment section right now, especially if the ad comes here on YouTube. Uh, the board's gone 25 and three in his time at Washington. Uh, obviously, Dan Lanning was such a big target. The board did beat him twice this year with the Huskies. Uh, a couple high-scoring shootouts there. They took care of Texas in the CFP semifinals. And if you were to power rank the top young coaches in the game, I, I do think the board's pretty highly on that list. And I think if you if the USC job was open, to be the number one candidate, right? Maybe even one of the Big Ten jobs. Uh, I think it is a. I think regionality does still matter a little bit in college football, not nearly as much as it once did. Uh, and of course, this is not an easy job. I, I, I've said that many many a time again. It's not an easy gig because you are replacing the guy. Kalen DeBoer could be a really good coach. He could he could he could win three titles at Alabama and be a, a, a one of the best ones to do it. He will never be as good as Nick Saban. I do not think there will ever be a coach again as good as Nick Saban was. So no matter who you hire, it's going to be a downgrade. But with that in mind, I, I do think DeBoer could be a, a, a good fit. I think no matter what coach you hire, it's just going to be a downgrade. And the expectations are going to have to be adjusted as a result. Now, we will keep you guys covered with more here on this Alabama coaching search 
Uh, maybe another at home tomorrow. My wife will be back from work, so maybe I'll go into the studio as well. We'll TBD on that front. We'll get news at some point. I, I do believe that Greg Burns being honest because he wants to do it in the next 72 hours. Hopefully it's not during uh, some of the playoff games because that's not as much entertaining, but it's, it's fine. We will have you guys covered. Hit that sub button right now. All right, over to Mike Norvell. Uh, again, sounds like he's in the running here as well. I don't know if there's a true 1A, 1B, 1, 2, 3, whatever the pecking order is. Uh, FSU and Norvell have sent us some tweets about the Seminoles, which I think is a little bit more of just keeping things on the steady. Also worth mentioning, FSU now doing with NCAA infractions, their offensive coordinator getting suspended. Uh, NCAA came down aggressively hard on Florida State. Uh, having read what they've done, a little bit over the top, I would suspect. Nothing against Norvell, by the way. Uh, seems like it was the OC and the boosters and the NIL guys not following the rules that Norvell allegedly laid out pretty clearly. So I, I, I do think Norvell is still in the running here. Uh, if I had to say the top two, it, again, it's all it's all vibes-based. It's all based on the reports and rumors, right? We don't really have a lot of great inside info because they're doing a pretty good job of keeping it uh, tightly lipped. I think DeBoer and Norvell are your top two candidates for this job. Who do you want, realistically speaking, as the next Alabama head coach? Sound off for me in the comments section right now. Today's show is made possible by Prize Picks, the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. It's you against the numbers. More than or less than on two to six player staff projections and watch your winnings roll in. Go to prizepicks.com slash CLNS and use code CLNS for a first deposit match up to $100. Link's going to be in the comments and the description of today's show. It's prizepicks.com slash CLNS. All right, next up here is the Tommy Reese status, where it sounds like he's going to get an interview, potentially, which I I think would be a mistake. Um, I, I not, not, It's fine to interview him. Giving him the job, I think, would be a mistake. I think this is kind of more of the, he's in-house, he knows all the guys. If we miss on everybody, then maybe this could be a possible candidate. Maybe this could be someone we go out and, and add and, and promote just to stabilize things for the short term. But I don't think Reese would have great success. I mean, I, no one else hired Tommy Reese this year. So I don't think you can give the job to the one-year offensive coordinator. It's fine to interview him and, you know, placate him to a certain extent and, you know, go with the top internal candidate, I guess. But I don't think that's a a viable head coaching option for Alabama at all. Now, Football Scoop has mentioned two other names who they said were gaining some traction uh, in the search. Mike Loxley and Eli Drinkwitz. Uh, Eli Drinkwitz, of course, is the Missouri head coach, and he's coming off a very impressive season for Missouri. Uh, a really great growth uh, this, this past year for overall. 12 and 1 in one year at Appalachian State, goes to Missouri 5 and 5, 6 and 7, 6 and 7. You're like, okay, this, this might not be a great thing. And then he has the 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 10, the, the double-digit win season this year for Missouri. They're gonna be among the top CFP threats now. They were the second best SEC East team, and I'd argue maybe the third best SEC team. Ole Miss probably in that conversation as well. Uh I, I think that's kind of based all on one year. And if this is Alabama, and I get you might have a tough time luring bigger candidates, I don't think this idea of just hiring guy who's had one winning season the best in his time in the SEC is a route I really want to pursue. The other name is Mike Loxley. Now, Loxley was part of the uh, Nick Saban school for coaches who can't coach good and want to do other stuff good too. Uh, he spent some time as the Alabama OC, co-OC for two years after being the Maryland interim head coach. He was the New Mexico head coach for a while. He was bad in New Mexico. Didn't get through his third year. He won two games. Uh, one and five is the Maryland interim head coach. Has gotten better in five years now at Maryland. They were bad three and nine his first year. COVID year will ignore. Seven wins, eight wins, eight wins. Bowl games included. Three straight bowl game wins. That's great, but... Eh. Again, that, that would feel very uninspiring is how that particular fire would heal. And, and, and frankly, if you don't get one of those consensus six, if you don't get at this point Kiffin or Dabo as your fallbacks, and I don't even want Dabo that much, if you, if you don't get DeBoer or Norvell, 
man, it, it gets a little, ugh, a little dicey unless Greg Byrne pulls out a wild card and goes off the board and stuns everybody, which I think is still a possibility. He, he is running a fairly tight ship. So what is your confidence level in this coaching search before we go? Scale it for me from 1 to 10 in the comments section.